So with Indian Wells done and dusted for another year, we have some massive changes to the rankings, not just on the ATP and WTA main rankings, but also in the race of the finals. It's changed a lot over the last week or so. Let's go have a look at who won last week though, because we only had two tournaments, both at Indian Wells. So having a look at the ladies result last week, and it was Alina Rabakina getting revenge over Sabalenka from her Australian Open loss. 7-6-6-4 in a very fun matchup. And Rabakina got a big boost in the rankings for that. And over on the men's side, Carlos Alcaraz taking out Medvedev, who was on a 19-match win streak. 6-3, 6-2, very easy for Alcaraz. And he got a very big boost in the rankings, which we'll talk about in a second. Starting with the players that are outside the top 10 who got a nice boost from a good Indian Wells campaign. Francis Tiafo is now 14 in the world, which is a career equaling high for him. Two spots higher than last week after making the semifinals at Indian Wells. Krajikova, even though she didn't do great at Indian Wells compared to Dubai, she still got a little boost towards the top 10. Three spots higher to number 13. And Mukova, who had a very good Indian Wells. She went up 21 spots to number 55 in the world. And crazy enough, she's actually playing qualifiers of Miami as we speak. So, so three players there that did well at Indian Wells. They got a nice boost in the rankings. And the players that went down in the rankings, mainly because this time last year, they played so well and they didn't replicate that. Catch Menovich. He goes down four spots to number 35 in the world after losing a lot of points. Halep didn't get a chance to defend that semifinal she made last year. She goes down six spots to number 25 in the world. And Bedosa had a really good year last year at Indian Wells, got to the semifinals. She dropped down seven spots to number 29 in the world. So some players there couldn't replicate their Indian Wells from last year, dropped down the ranks. All right, let's start with the WTA now because we have some really interesting changes to the top 10, but nothing up the top. With Fiontech staying at world number one, Sabalenka at two, and Pagula at three. But you can notice there that the points have changed a lot, especially between the top two. But we do have a change in the middle with Garcia going up to four, Jabir going down to number five. But as you can see there with their points, very, very close together. Goff doesn't move. She stays at number six. But Alina Rabakina, she goes up three spots to number seven in the world after winning Indian Wells and is finally getting the recognition that she didn't get from winning Wimbledon last year. Up to a career high number seven. Kazakina stays at eight. Benchage at nine. And Zachary, she's dropped down three spots to number 10 in the world after dropping points from last year's semifinals. She did make the quarterfinals this year, but it wasn't enough. Basically swaps around with Rabakina. So that is the top 10 for this week on the WTA. Having a look at the race of the finals now, and things are getting really interesting after a couple of big events. Sabalenka still at number one, with Rabakina not too far at number two, and Shriontek at number three. But Pagula, she goes up to number four, pushing Bencic down to number five after having a better week than Bencic this week at Indian Wells. Krajikova stays at number six, and another change with Goff going up to number seven and Azarenka going down to number eight again because Goff had a better result this week than Azarenka. And another change down the bottom with Garcia going up to number nine and Lynette going down to number 10. So that's what the rankings after a couple of big events. And of course, Miami with next week will be really, really interesting to see how the rankings look before the clay court season because there's still plenty of movement left to go. Going over to the men's side of things now and we have a change at the top. El Karaz, he had to win in New Wells to be number one, and he did it. He won Indian Wells, he becomes number one again. He just makes a habit of winning titles, big titles, and becoming world number one at the same time. He did it at the US Open, and he's doing it again here. He pushes Djokovic down to number two, but he has to win Miami if he's gonna stay number one going onto the clay. Sidibas goes to number three, he stays at number three with Root at number four. And of course, Root has a lot of points to defend coming up in Miami. Uh, and then we have a change in the middle with Medvedev continuing to climb up the rankings. He's now into the top five, one spot higher than last week, with FAA going up to number six, which is a career equaling high for him. That's four spots higher than last week. Rublev stays at seven, Runa stays at eight. Herkatch comes back into the top 10 at number nine, two spots higher than last week. And Taylor Fritz, after failing to defend the points from last year, he's dropped down to number 10 in the world, with Rafa Nadal falling out of the top 10. Last time was 2005 that Rafa wasn't in the rankings. So major changes to the tennis world and a massive change at the top. Let's go over to the ATP finals race now because things are starting to look really Really fun. Djokovic, Australian Open champion, stays at number one, with Medvedev going up one spot to number two, and Alcaraz going up 10 spots to number three after winning Indian Wells, pushing City past two spots down number four. So there's a big change there between those four guys. Norrie stays in the middle at number five, with Paul going down two spots to number six. Sinner goes up two spots after a good semi final appearance in Indian Wells, pushing Fritz down two spots to number eight. Diminor also goes down two spots to number nine, and Hashinov also dropping two spots to number 10, with Rublev dropping out of the top 10 completely. So some big changes up the top there, and those four guys 
Three of those four are playing in Miami. Of course, Djokovic we're not going to see, but there's a chance after Miami, we could have a new number one in the ATP finals race going into the clay season. So there you have it, a massive week for the rankings, not just on the ATP with that big change at the top, Elkers reclaiming the world number one spot, but on the WTA as well, the gap is closing between Sviantec and the pack, and it's mainly because of Sabalenka getting a lot of points. And next week, we know Sviantec does have a lot of points to defend, as does Alcaraz. In fact, the two world number ones are the defending champions as well, which is kind of interesting. Uh, so next week's going to be huge. But let me know down in the comments below. What are you most excited about going forward? Are you excited that it's so close on the ATP? Or do you, do you think Djokovic is a little hard done by? Man, things are so interesting in tennis right now, and the rankings are getting very, very exciting.